So looking at the activation of alcohols, so the first ones we learn about is actually just using strong acid, so H plus, H2SO4, um, and then a nucleophile that we add in. So in this first case, we have a primary alcohol, so that's important to note here too. So a primary alcohol, meaning right, the carbon is bonded, the alcohol is bonded to two hydrogens. And we're gonna activate that alcohol and then do a substitution reaction with it. So the primary alcohol, we should already know we can't do an SN1 reaction because we cannot make primary carbocations. So we should already know it can't be SN1. And we only know one other type of substitution reaction, so it has to be an SN2 reaction. So nucleophilic substitution in one step by molecular. So the first step here, though, because OH in both these cases, OH is not a good enough leaving group. Right? It's not a good enough leaving group. The whole point of this activation of alcohols is to make the alcohol a better leaving group. So the way we're going to do that here we're going to have the alcohol react with H+. Plus. That's the first step. So what did that do? That took my alcohol and made it a better leaving group, right? It's water now. It's a water leaving group. Now, it's a good leaving group, but can I do an SN1 reaction, right? This is important. No, because we cannot make primary carbocations. There's not enough stabilization, right? Carbocations are high energy, and they need to be stabilized. Secondary is the kind of the worst we could do. Primary won't happen. So what else is in the solution? So I could have drawn this Na plus Br minus, right? Start to recognize those ionic compounds. So if you have Br minus in the solution, what can that be? That can be the nucleophile. And because it's primary, we're going to have to do an SN2 reaction. Backside attack. SN2. So we get for a product, we've lost water. Right? And Na plus is still around, so we balance our charge, right? If you look back, what was the overall charge here to start with? It was plus. So we still have an overall plus charge. We've done a substitution. So we activated the alcohol with strong acid. All right, you could imagine this being HBr as well. It could do the same thing if it was just HBr. We get an SN2 because we've made this a good leaving group. We've activated the alcohol, SN2, substitute product. But HCl doesn't work as well. So this, this thing up here could be HBr, would essentially do the same thing. But HCl doesn't work as well, so we have to use another reagent. Just because Cl minus isn't that good of a nucleophile because it's higher up in the periodic table, right? It's a little more electronegative than bromine. So we actually have to use this thing called, they call it a Lucas reagent with zinc. So it's a, we use a metal to help activate this. So the metals are pretty electron deficient. So you can think of them, the, again, the first step in all of these. The alcohol is a nucleophile. You have to activate the alcohol. So you got to put something on the alcohol, change the alcohol. So it's going to react with the zinc. You can say like an SN2 type, kicking out a chloride. All right, I actually did this wrong. I would say I would switch these around. It should be drawn where the zinc is on top because that's the first thing that's going to react. And I would draw it that way. So the zinc is on top, same same step, but you'll see the zinc on top. Don't want to make you confused. So now the oxygen is bonded to the zinc. We kicked out a Cl minus. The H plus really is just kind of there. It's to serve as a HCl. It's kind of there just to be another source of H plus and Cl minus. So we're going to use Cl minus here. So it's just adding more Cl minus into the reaction. Then same as before, it's a primary, it will start out with primary alcohol, so we can't do SN1, so it has to be SN2. Cl minus our nucleophile, whether it's coming from the zinc or it's coming from the HCl that was in there. We just do an SN2 reaction. You got the zinc chloride. 
So again, just a substitution. You gotta activate the alcohol. So if you wanna add a chlorine, you need to use the zinc Cl2. If you wanna add bromine, you use HBr. So what happens if you have a tertiary alcohol, right? So primary alcohols, we know you cannot have carbocations. So if you look in your, in your notes, there it talks about <clears throat> SN2 is possible with primary alcohols for these HBr or these zinc reagents. But SN1 is also possible because when it reacts with this, so if I have these reaction conditions, if I just had HBr, and I told you this was the product, Br plus H2O. If I told you that's the product, that's great. So you did a substitution, right? You must have activated the alcohol at some point and got it substituted. But you should know something based on the fact that this is a tertiary alcohol now. What mechanism is not possible? So obviously it's a substitution. But what mechanism is not possible anymore? SN2 is no longer possible because it's too sterically hindered here to do that backside attack. So it can't be an SN2. So what, mu what must the reaction be? It has to be an SN1. So that's a little tricky, right? Those other ones, some of those other mechanisms we learned, the PBR3, the, um, the SOCl2, and the, the tosylate, the sulfonyl chlorides, those, are all SN those all involve SN2 reactions. They don't involve SN1 at all. These ones, the HBr and the zinc Cl2, you have to think a little bit. You know primary alcohols, it's going to have to be SN2. Tertiary, it's going to have to be SN1. Secondary, that's the tough one. That one, you, you, it's hard to predict. I think the book says you could say it's SN2 all the time, but I'm not, I'm not convinced. You'd have to look at the products. And how would you know if we look at the products? SN2 would always do inversion, right? So that'd be one thing to look for. If it was wedged, if the alcohol was wedged, and the, and the product you added ended up being hatched, that should tell you SN2 reaction, right? So let's do this mechanism quick. Activate the alcohol. can't do SN2, so the we're actually going to do an SN1, to so form a carbocation, it's a tertiary carbocation, have water as well, BR- is still floating around, and the BR goes there, of course carbocations are planar, they're sp2 hybridized, so they come from the top or the bottom, so you, if there was, right, in this case I don't have four different things here, do I? They're all the same. But if you did start out with, right, if this started out being R or S, the product would be R, S, or racemic. It would be racemic. Because once you form a carbocation, right, then you can come from the top or the bottom and you lose that stereochemistry. And so there, it gets you to your product.